Welcome to A Look Ahead. We're delighted you've decided to join us. We study the Sabbath School lessons as prepared by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And this is a very, very significant series of lessons entitled, The Great Controversy. Hmm, the biggest war of all time, would that be? This is lesson number 10 in that series for June 8 of 2024, entitled, Spiritualism Exposed. And what does that have to do with war? Well, let's see if we can figure that out. Our kind and wonderful Father, as we turn to explore some of the critical issues in Scripture, help us not to be misled, not to be deceived by any of the many devices that, the sa that Satan will try to use. Help us to see in this lesson some ways in which we can remain straight on the path toward your kingdom is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is spiritualism? Is it wrong? Does it need to be exposed? Jim? Well, the Bible study guide. Decades ago, stories surrounded, excuse me, stories surfaced about the near-death experiences in which people who died and were then revived given, gave incredible accounts of what they had seen and heard while, quote, dead. Millions now believe that these accounts and evidence, or excuse me, are evidence that the dead are really dead. Not, really, not really dead. The foundational belief of spiritualism is one of Satan's most widespread and effective deceptions. In fact, spiritualism began back in Ellen White in no, Eden, no. excuse me, back in Eden with this serpent's lie to Eve, you will not surely die, Genesis 3-4. This idea also take, lay at the root of one of the greatest spurious religious movements of the 19th century for, with the Fox sisters claim, later admitted to be fraudulent, that they could receive answers to, other, to their questions from the spirit of the dead. The aim of this lesson... Were they the ones who came up with the, first came up with the idea of the Ouija board? I could very well be back then. I mean... They used to sell it on, on Sears, didn't they? You had Ouija boards at Sears, the catalogs, or anyway, I don't know. And what do you think AI t can be used with? Yeah. I mean, how can you trust anything there? Well, anyway, there's another stuff. The aim of this lesson is to show that our only safeguard against Satan's last day's delusions is a personal relationship with Christ and a solid grounding in the teachings of the Bible. This includes his, its teaching about death regardless of what our eyes and ears and hearts might try to tell us from the Bible study guide. We, uh, unfortunately, our family had some sad news this last week. One of my wife's nieces, who has unfortunately gotten off into drugs and other things like that, and we hoped that, we had hoped that she was going to, things were going to get better, and then we found out that uh, she was in the intensive care unit Mm. with liver failure and she passed. Mm. Really, really sad story, but you, when you come up like that to, to face death and all of a sudden you start asking, okay, what's going on on the other side over there, you know? Mm. Okay, Jennifer. From the writings of Ellen G. White, the theory of the immort immortality of the soul was one of those false doctrines that Rome, borrowing from paganism, incorporated into the religion of Christendom. Martin Luther classed it with the monstrous fables that form part of the Roman dunghill of Decretals. <laughs> it's quite a, quite a name. The <laughs> Roman dunghill of Decretals or Decretals. Wow. That's in great controversy from that. She quotes him. All the way to the Bible, from the books of Moses all the way to the book of Revelation, we are told not to involve ourselves with mediums, spirits, or any kind of contact with the dead. Charles? Just couldn't help it. Uh, uh, Luther was so vehemently against anything that Rome stood for. Yeah. On October the 31st, 2017 was the 500th year. And that's the same day that 200 million Lutherans went back to the mother church. It's, he would have 
probably. Yeah. So sad to see that happen. Well, they're, anyway, they're, they, help it. The people are not taught. Yeah. You know, they, it's, it's just a kind of a get together and a social uh, and. Uh, form um, of religion. Little, little, you, you feed them something that's not true, but they learn to adapt to it, apparently. I pray that we don't fall into that trap, sir. All yes. Right. Where am I, sir? Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, 10, 11. Don't sacrifice your children in the fires or on your altars. And don't let your people practice divination or look for omens or use spells or charms. And don't let them consult the spirits of the dead. Okay. Let That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, really. Straightforward, yes. Leviticus 20, verse 27, Any man or woman who consults the spirits of the dead shall be stoned to death. Any person who does this is responsible for his own death. That's pretty blunt, right? Paul didn't read that one, huh? Oh, he forgot that verse. He forgot yeah. that verse. Satanism, witchcraft, spiritualism, and spiritism are all demonic. They are attempts to get us to worship a false god, not the real god. What does the Old Testament tell us about the condition of a person after she or he dies? Ecclesiastes 9.5 says, yes, the living know that they are going to die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward. They are completely forgotten. And then Job 7.7-9, 7 Job said, remember, O God, my life is only a breath. My happiness has already ended. You see me now, but never again. If you look for me, I'll be gone. Like a cloud that fades and is gone. People die and never return. They are forgotten by all who knew them. Good News Bible. Wow. That's pretty permanent, isn't it? Myra? Through unbiblical and... Though, hmm? Though unbiblical. Though unbiblical, the belief that the dead go right to heaven at death has been around for so long and so firmly entrenched that it is very difficult to, for people to let it go. People use few texts, use a few texts that are taken out of context to try to justify the belief. But the false teaching leaves them with no protection against the deceptions of Satan, the deceptions Satan can foist on them, especially in the final crisis. So, are the dead aware of their surroundings? No. Are able to communicate in any way? No. Well, Psalm 6, verse 5, here's a couple of verses. In the world of the dead, you are not remembered, nor no one can praise you there. Talking about praising God. Psalms 115, 17. The Lord is not praised by the dead, by any who go down to the land of silence. This the land of silence, of course, is a code word for the world of the dead. One of the clearest examples of what the Bible teaches in the Old Testament is found in Psalm 76, verse 6. Jim? The idea of the dead as disembodied spirits hovering around hold to, on yep, hovering around to communicate am i in the wrong when the assyrian a little bit higher oh i okay i maybe you jumped i was looking down there where it says 76 and yeah it's, sorry i'm sorry when the assyrian army was defeated and destroyed the death of the soldiers is called their final sleep psalm 76 verse 6. okay now which group are we talking about there is the 185,000 the 185, Assyrian soldiers who yeah. perished. Sennacherib, I think. Surrounding was. Jerusalem. Yeah. And the, the, the complete Jewish Bible calls that, what happened to them, the final sleep. Go ahead. The idea of the dead as disembodied spirits hovering around to communicate with the living is not a biblical concept at all, but pure paganism. Okay, and then there's the verse. When you Psalm 76, yeah. when you threatened them, O God of Jacob, the horses and their riders fell dead. Yeah. Many people today have the idea that the devil does not even exist. 
We learned about that last week. Thus, most, when, most Jews apparently don't either. Really? Yeah, it, it's it's shocking. You, but uh, uh, Dennis Prager lives in, and he many times he mentions that he doesn't believe that there's an, a, a two forces in the universe and that there's a, a devil or Satan. Yet, how many texts do we have? This? Yeah. It, 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 I'm talking about in the Old Testament. I'm yeah. talking about the New. Yeah. Um, many people today have the idea that the devil does not even exist. Thus, when they are approached by what appear to be supernatural events, they begin to believe that those are truly from God. Jennifer. From Ellen G. White in The Great Controversy. So, if there is no devil, they, you have to believe that everything comes from God. But everything that's completely beyond human yeah, power. It's beyond, yeah. Yeah. Everything's supernatural. Supernatural, but yeah. How can you believe in a God that does what the devil is doing? Yeah. I mean, You'd be surprised. Emma. You take from Genesis up through the Song of Solomon, and that, I believe, has been, well, Jeremiah 8, verse 8, the scribes have made it into a lie. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's that's the, what interpreters do. Sometimes. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, many will be confronted by the spirits of devils pers impersonating beloved relatives or friends and declaring the most dangerous heresies. Are you ready to see the devil himself impersonate one of your relatives? Oh. That would be quite a... Wow. These visitants will appeal to our tenderest sympathies and will work miracles to sustain their pretensions. We must be prepared to withstand them with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything and that they who thus appear are the spirits of devils. And some of you are aware that this has happened already to some people. I know the story of one person, that a, a mother, died and the mother showed up and started telling all of them and fortunately she just says get thee behind me satan it was gone looked like it was looked like it's a mother and talking like bam gone mm -hmm. death is a sleep a rest in sleep until the resurrection bible study guide though we mourn for the dead think this way about those who die in christ they close their eyes in death, and then, regardless of how long it takes until Jesus returns, the next thing they know is the second coming. The first thought they might have at the resurrection is, wow, Jesus really did come back mm. soon after all. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few minutes ago, I yeah, thought it was going to be a long time. Yeah. 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 How many people re go to sleep at night or concerned about uh, what happened during the time they're sleeping. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're having a good, if you're sleeping right. <laughs> yeah. And if you never woke up, what have you lost? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The clearest example of Jesus' reference to the condition of the dead was about Lazarus. You remember that story? <clears throat> no, we don't like that story. Hmm? Just kidding. We don't like that story. Is it? <laughs> the story of Lazarus from John 11. Jesus said this and then added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go and wake him up. The disciples answered, If he is asleep, Lord, he will get well. Jesus meant that Lazarus had died, but they thought he meant natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Okay. <clears throat> Skipping several verses. Verse 21, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask him for. Your brother will rise to life, Jesus told her. I know, she replied, that he will rise to life on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. Good news, Bible. Absolutely. <clears throat> Well, there's a lot of other passages, some of which we will read further on. 2 Timothy 1.10, 1 Corinthians 15.51-54, and 1 Thessalonians 4.15-70 make it very clear that people who will sleep, 
who, who, who die will sleep until the resurrection when they will hear the archangel's voice and the sound of God's trumpet. Just a little comment. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Jesus' last trip to Jerusalem on his way. And he, that's the word, dragged his feet for four days. Because Jews believe that three days, if it's four days, it's yes, mm -hmm. really truly dead, dead, yeah. dead. Yeah. So he wanted to make sure, and of course, Jerusalem was buzzing with people from all over the world. And what a way to demonstrate, hey, I am the guy. I am yeah. the resurrection and life. I think uh, Abraham Lincoln was kept for four days. Uh, no, was it George Washington? Was yeah, George Washington. Kept for four days to make sure that he was gone. Yeah. Same way. So this was beyond any reasonable doubt that Jesus. Yeah, yeah they believed that the, the spirit hovered around somewhere. And because obviously a few people had, they thought they were dead and they, you know, they resurrected. They come back to life. We, we know that happens even in our day. But they said after three days, no, no, no chance. We remember Luke 16. The rich, uh, the rich guy says, yeah. hey, well, you know, I've got five brothers. Warn them so that yeah. they don't end up in a place of torment. And Jesus says, well, they got Moses and the prophets. If, yep. Even if they won't have Moses and the prophets, if they, excuse me, if they won't believe Moses and the prophets, even if somebody comes from the dead, it'll have no impact on them. And guess what? Happened? And look what shortly after th this Lazarus, mm -hmm. they plotted to kill Lazarus <laughs> because you can't have this guy going around raising the sick and the dead. Uh, they, they, their whole economic system is going to go to pot. Yeah. I wonder how many Sadducees who absolutely didn't believe a resurrection from the dead was possible, how many of them were there when Lazarus was raised to life? Yeah. Uh, really, really. Well, there's enough of them that, that the story is in the Bible, that yeah. in the New Testament, that uh, they plotted to kill Lazarus. Yeah. And yet we're told in Acts that Pharisees and Sadducees followed Jesus later. Later, later. realized after some the of them realized, "Hey, this is for real. We we, we can't." After Jesus' well, resurrection. So yeah, you can look in Acts chapter six, verse seven, and Acts chapter fifteen, verse five, and it'll tell you that both Pharisees and Sadducees later, a, a number of them became Christians. Yeah, and that day is coming. By the way, I'm so convinced. Mm -hmm. that that is not too far from now that people will of all faiths mm -hmm. will join yeah and in a day a nation is born i think isaiah 66 i, I we're going to witness that okay myra it's your turn is this uh bible study guide yes. mm -hmm. both the old and the new testaments use the symbolism of death as a sleep at least 53 times in the Bible, the word sleep is equated with death. The Bible writers concur that there is no conscience, conscious, conscious existence in an immortal, in an immortal soul that leaves the body immediately after death. Finished. Done. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians 15, Paul engaged in a fairly significant argument that if Christ was not dead, and then raised to life and taken to heaven, then none of us could be either. However, if Christ was raised from the dead and went to heaven, there's hope also for us. Why is the resurrection such a powerful hope for the Christian faith? What if we had the cross but no resurrection? What hope would we have? Why then is the resurrection such an important part of our faith? Okay, Matthew, Paul, and John gave, have given some very strong words about spiritualism in the last days. Jim? Matthew, chapter 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many people. Then many prophets, many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear. They will perform great miracles and wonders in order to deceive even God's chosen people, if possible. Yep. Second Thessalonians 7, excuse me, 2 verses 7 to 9. The mysterious wickedness is already at work, but what is going to happen will not happen until the one who holds it back is taken out of the way. Then the wicked one will be revealed 
But when the Lord Jesus comes, he will kill him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the dazzling presence. The wicked one will come with the power of Satan and perform all kinds of false miracles and wonders. From the good news. Okay. So what does it mean, kill him with the breath from his mouth? It's his message, the false message. All God has to do is say the word and the devil is gone. Just like that. Okay. Jennifer, you want to pick up there, Revelation 13? Revelation 13, verses 13 to 14. This second beast performed great miracles. It made fire come down out of heaven to earth in the sight of everyone. And it deceived all the people living on earth by means of the miracles which it was allowed to perform in the presence of the first beast. The beast told them to build an image in honor of the beast that had been wounded by the sword and yet lived. Okay. And what was the result? In Revelation 16, verses 13 to 14, Then I saw three unclean spirits that looked like frogs. They were coming out of the mouth of the dragon. Who is the dragon? Satan. The devil. Satan himself. The mouth of the beast, who's that? That's Satan. Papacy? Yeah. And the mouth of the false prophet, who is that? That could be here. <laughs> the other church groups that join Rome in their final deceptions. Okay, go ahead. They are the spirits of demons that perform miracles. These three spirits go out to all the kings of the world to bring them together for the battle on the great day of Almighty God. Wow. Mm -hmm. We must be very clear. The devil will perform real miracles to try to persuade us of his ideas. Charles? Their power of persuasion is to be found not in the content of their message, but in the power of supernatural manifestations called signs or miracles. Wow. They, perf they perf perform, do signs, thus appealing to the effective side of human beings rather than their uh, dis discretionary and rational ability. So in other words, Satan is going to appeal to what side of us? Emotion. Emotional. The emotional yeah. side, not, not to get you to think clearly. Well, don't read the Bible anymore. You see, yeah. so, uh, don't need to. So it's all uh, sheer emotionalism. Uh, the fact that these signs are performed by demons shows that the unifying force of the message of the three demons, dragon, beast, and false prophet is spiritualistic in nature. God is not their source of origin or origin. And the cosmic conflict approaches uh, its, its closure. Demonic power will enter the arena of human history in an unprecedented way. Spiritualism whose very foundation is the non-biblical teaching of the immortality of soul will nearly take the world captive. Wow. And if you believe Revelation 13, the entire world will wander after the beast. The beast. Okay. It is dangerous to trust our emotions. They can lead us to conclusions which are not true. Pardon. Ellen White in Great Controversy again says, Satan has long been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. Little by little, he has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception in the development of spiritualism. He has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs, but it will be reached in the last remnant of time. Except those who are kept by the power of God through faith in his word, the whole world will be swept into the ranks of this delusion. The people are fast being lulled to a fatal security, to the awakening, to be awakened only by the outpouring of the wrath of God. Great Controversy wow. 561. Let us be very clear. Satan's efforts will be redoubled in the final days of the world, this world's history. He will do everything he possibly can to keep people from observing the commandments of God or having the faith of Jesus. 
course, that's the clue at the end of the three angels' messages, isn't it? These miracles will be summarized and made particularly in challenging in the final events. Myra? Yes, from the Great Controversy again. Mrs. White says, Fearful sights of a supernatural character will soon be revealed in the heavens. In, to in token of the power of miracle-working demons, the spirits of the devils will go forth to the kings of the earth and to the whole world to fasten them in deception and to urge them on to unite with Satan in his last struggle against the government of heaven. By these agencies, rulers and subjects will be alike deceived. Persons will arise pretending to be Christ himself and claiming the title and worship which belong to the world's, belong to the world's Redeemer. They will perform wonderful miracles of healing and will profess to the revelations of heaven, contradicting the testimony of scriptures. And I would interrupt for just a second to remind you that a few years ago, now not too long ago, two or three years ago, there was an entire article in the National Geographic magazine featuring all the people who claim to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. I have a book called uh, 16 Dying and Rising Saviors, something like that. Really? It was done back uh, in the 19th century, I think it was. But uh, yeah, one, no, it's, it's a, one of the most famous characters r rode around in a, in a convertible white Cadillac, New York City. Yeah. Okay. As the crowning act in the great drama of deception, <clears throat> Satan himself will impersonate, will impersonate Christ. The church has long professed to look to the Savior's advent as the consummation of her hopes. Now the great deceiver will make it appear that Christ has come. In different parts of the world, Satan will manifest himself among men as a maj majestic being of dazzling brightness and resembling the description of the Son of God given by John in the Revelation, Revelation 1, 13 to 15. Wow, that would be something to see. Wow. Not something you want to see, however. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, some people have been confused about how to know whether it is, uh, when it is the true Christ who is coming. We have an answer for that. That question has been answered clearly by the Bible and Ellen White. Satan will never be allowed to duplicate the actual manner of Christ's coming. When Jesus appears, the entire sky will be full of bright shining angels. So the ones who know their scriptures should not be deceived. That's right. Should not be deceived. Uh, my only question with that is, we see now what Spielberg, uh, he's old, but using that example, can do with lights and... Yeah. It's deception. Deception. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How... It, how could they do something that would make a few people be deceived anyway? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He will. He will do everything. He, excuse me. Everything he possibly can. In well, the Lord. In general, uh, deception is not bald-faced lies. No. It's truth with some yeah. cyanide capsule inside. So that you, if you're going to poison the dog, you put the cyanide in the, in the hamburger. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well. And, um, that was the end of it. Was a lesson, I? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and furthermore, Satan is not permitted to counterfeit, not permitted to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. What do we know about Christ's advent? Every eye will see him as the light goes from east to west. Not only that, who else is going to be there? All the angels. All the, all the angels, the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ himself, all the angels. The sky will be full of bright, shining angels. Not just lights, angels. And second time, when he comes the second time, he is not going to touch the earth. Yeah, but you don't even have to wait for that. Right. Just look up. 
But you know what Satan can do, yeah. who knows, because he's going to, he can... But he will not, you just read to you, we, we he will not be permitted to, to counterfeit the manner of Christ's advent. But we don't know what an angel looks like. So Satan can produce something and say it is an angel. I, I'm just saying that there, yeah, there's ways... He has ways. angels of his own. Genesis yeah. 120, was it 126? He let us make man in our image. It's the Elohim that yeah. said this. Yeah. It's, it's finite beings in time and space that with the Yahweh, it's a... The Savior has... Us. I'm sorry. The Savior has warned his people against deception upon this point and has clearly foretold the manner of his second coming. There shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Wherefore, if they shall say to you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. This coming, there is no possibility of counterfeiting. It will be universally known, witnessed by the whole world. Um, and our world is shrinking, mm -hmm. at least figuratively. Almost every day we get on our phone, we dial a couple of numbers and talk to our daughter and son-in-law in Africa. Just, and there they are, as clear as can be. Mm -hmm. Amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Our, our, our son in New York City, right there. So, who knows what the devil will be allowed to, the question not what he can do, what he will be allowed to do. That's the question. Our Christian friends who do not have a clear understanding of the state of the dead have been really troubled by stones, by stories, I'm sorry, of people who apparently died and then came back to life in what is known as near-death experiences. And I'm sure you're all aware of multiple books have been written about these experiences. We must not be deceived by these ideas. And Ellen White says, just before us is the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth, Revelation 3.10. All whose faith is not firmly <clears throat> established upon the word of God will be deceived and overcome. Satan, quote, works with all <clears throat> deceivableness of unrighteousness to gain control of the children of men, and his deceptions will continually increase. But he can gain his object only as men voluntarily yield to his temptations. Those who are earnestly seeking a knowledge of the truth and are striving to purify their souls through obedience, thus doing what they can to prepare for the conflict, will find in the God of truth a sure defense. <clears throat> because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee, verse 10, is the Savior's promise. He would sooner send every angel out of heaven to protect his people than leave one soul that uh, trusts in him to be overcome by Satan. Great Controversy 560. Some comfort in that. Wow. So how do we know, how do we who have Biblically based ideas about sleep death share that truth with those who have the idea that people will go straight to heaven or to hell when they die. No. Let us review the history of spiritualism or spiritism. Where are we? Jim? I think it's yours. Spiritualism is part of the devil's scheme to promote the diabolical theory that we are gods and can live without God. Thus, spiritualism is the devil's device to keep humanity on the side of the great controversy. To maintain any form of spiritualism is to, is to be struck, excuse me, is to be stuck on the side of the devil. To promote spiritualism, the devil changed the biblical definition of death and the Bible teaching about the nature of humanity. These false doctrines lay the groundwork for the spurious teaching that we are eternal and indestructible and that we continue to exist even beyond death. As a consequence, this deception opens the door to the dangerous belief that after we die, we can continue to communicate with other people and even angelic beings. 
The movement of the European Enlightenment embarked on a long, hard battle to eradicate all medieval forms of spiritualism, including communication with the dead. However, Enlightenment failed in its endeavor. According to the biblical prophecy, excuse me, according to biblical philosophy, prophecy, spiritualism will strike humanity with a full force in the end times, preparing people for the last great deception in the great controversy. That is why God's people are called to proclaim to humanity the true nature and intentions of spiritualism as well as the biblical teaching on human nature, the nature of death and the true hope of humanity. Our hope is not based on the erroneous notion of an immortal soul, but on the assurance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and on an eternal relationship with Him. Amen. I have a, uh, what's it, uh, Hebrews 2.15. Those who through fear of death yeah. are in lifelong bondage. Yeah. Who's been in, in the fear of death longer than anybody? <laughs> Satan. Mm -hmm, yeah. Right? I mean, not, that is not such a big deal. Jesus did, went, did all this demonstration that he has the power of life and death, and he says, just listen. Mm -hmm. Let us notice the main emphasis of this lesson in review. Here's some key points. Jennifer? From the Bible Study Guide, number one, the true essence and intentions of spiritualism in the context of the great controversy is to deceive humanity into entering a direct relationship with demonic forces. Wow. Number two, the Bible teaches that humans are unitary, integrated beings, that the first death is a temporary sleep, and that the second death is total annihilation, which is also the biblical depiction of hell. And number three, the true hope that the Word of God gives us is the resurrection of the entire human being and an eternal relationship with God. What did Jesus tell his disciples? I will come again just as you saw me go into heaven. Into heaven. Uh, yep. This same Jesus. This same Jesus. Notice these additional comments about the history of modern spiritualism. Now, we're, we've done a lot of historical stuff, and here's a bunch more. Modern spiritualism refers to the religious and our philosophical belief that death is not the end of human existence. Rather, spiritualism contends that the spirit survives as an ethereal, 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 immaterial, external, immortal soul. Wow. After death, these souls or spirits continue to develop and evolve rapidly advancing to other dimensions and lives, levels of experience, existence and knowledge. Humans who are still in their bodies can contact these departed souls, asking help and guidance. Wow. These contacts uh, could be done through specialists such as mediums, or one could personally contact these spirits through study and practice. Generally, modern spiritualism is believed to have originated in Hydesville, New York. On March 31st, 1848. By the way, what else was happening about that time? The movement was coming together. The, the, the foundations of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. What other groups? Many, even Mormons. Yes, any other groups? Um, Christian science. Christian science, yes. Yep. And all so it's a, spiritism. Yeah. Great religious awakening, okay? Mm -hmm. 1848, with the Fox sisters, who claimed that the spirit communicated with them through a rapping code. In 1888, huh, another important year, one of the sisters disclosed that of all, rapping had been a hoax. But in 1889, she retracted her confession. Despite, <laughs> <laughs> despite huge scandals of fraud, spiritualism spread in North America. By the end of the 19th century, several million middle and upper class Americans considered themselves spiritualists. Wow. wow. 
you want to pick that up, Gordon? In the meantime, in the 1850s, Hippolyte Leon Denizard Rivali, I don't know that name, a French teacher known by the pseudonym Alan Kardec, developed Spiritism. Spiritism teaches that humans are incarnations and reincarnations of immortal spirits that populate a transcendent sphere. Thus, while spiritual, spiritism believes in the reincarnation of the eternal soul, spiritualism, adding a few letters, believes in the eternity of the soul without accepting the concept of reincarnation. And what major religious group believes in reincarnation? Hindus. Hindus, yeah. Well, all spiritists are spiritualists. Not all spiritualists are spiritists. Get, get around that. Although there <laughs> is some disagreement between these spiritualistic movements, they are all united by one belief, that is the immortality of the soul and the possibility of communicating with spirits after their death. In the second half of the 19th century, an increasing number of the educated elites of Europe embraced either spiritualism or spiritism, developing modern Western occultism. They organized themselves in numerous societies and associations, publishing an enormous quantity of books and articles on esoteric knowledge and magic from the Teacher's Bible Study Guide. Okay. We may not be aware of how much influence the idea of the immortality of the soul has had on other religions. This belief, now listen to this, this belief permeates shamanism, Shintoism, Hinduism, Buddhism, voodoo, other local and regional pagan religions. In ancient times, it invaded Pythagoreanism, Platonism, Aristotelianism, Middle Platonism, Neoplatonism, whoa, Manichaeism and Gnosticism were also built on the same concepts. Unfortunately, these ideas crept subtly into early Christian thinking. As a result, the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Churches have developed a complete cult of saints and saint worship and praying to saints, etc. The Protestant Reformation and the Reformers rejected this whole cult of the saints. Now, let's back up just a little bit. The lesson doesn't talk about this, but how did these pagan ideas ma manage to get into the Christian church? Syncretism. Syncretism, okay, that's a big fancy word. Tell me more. The predominant Christian church going into places like South America and so on. Well, not just in South America. Everywhere. In, yeah. such, I said such as. Yeah, okay. Would join the Christian ideas with the local pagan ideas. That's Catholicism. Yeah. yeah. We and came, early, we came up with called, Easter this way. That's why it's called Catholic, because it's, it's meaning universal. universal. It yeah, takes yeah. bits and pieces of the, yeah. Yeah. Well, around the world. Back in the early days, the idea was, well, if we just sort of accept some of these ideas, those people, it, it'll be easier for the pagans to just join us. Sure. We'll get them part of the way. Yeah. Yeah. The okay. gospel was pure uh, up until that time of the, the last disciple passed away. After they, everything went haywire. Yep. Nothing okay. they just motivates like greed. <laughs> Go ahead. I think it's you. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Number 23. I'm sorry. It is very interesting to note that modern spiritualism arose exactly the same time and in the same part of the world that Adventism arose during the 1840s in the northeastern United States. Was this Satan's attempt to introduce a counterfeit religion in place of the true? The European Enlightenment, or what is sometimes called modernism, set out with the idea to uproot completely any supernatural ideas from society. Unfortunately, they accomplished rooting out the idea of any belief in God, turning our society into a secular and atheistic one. But it did not remove spiritualism. Various forms of spiritualism are invading books, 
cartoons and movies in our day, do we need to stop for a second and talk about all the, the ways in which these kind of ideas are invading yeah. movies, et cetera, et cetera? TikTok. Uh, I'm, I probably shouldn't Jim? have said that. Okay, my turn. Oh, I guess it is. I'm sorry. Yes. What is the role of spiritualism in the devil's strategy versus the great controversy? By promoting spiritualism, the devil wants to explain and confirm his foundational deception that started the great controversy. Namely, that God is not the only God, but that we are all gods. Yeah, great idea, huh? Yeah. That we have life in and of ourselves. Not true. That we have a component, the soul, of our beings that is a spiritual, immaterial and ethereal, indestructible, immoral, and eternal. Not immoral, immortal. immortal. Immortal, sorry. And eternal and that we are morally autonomous. Okay, in other words, we don't need God. We're, de we're not going to take any directions from Him. No. We don't need His guidance. We can do it we can all do by it. ourselves. We can do it all by ourselves. Have we heard that from children? Let's see, <laughs> hold on a second. We said earlier that God's side is loving and Satan's side is selfish. Which side does this sound like? <laughs> hmm. It's all self-centered. <laughs> yeah. The devil understands that if he can deceive us even in one area of human existence or ideas, he can easily lead us into all kinds of other false doctrines. Notice some additional comments from the New Testament about the devil's capabilities. 1 Corinthians 10.20 No, what, am I, what I am saying is that what is sacrificed on pagan altars is offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be partners with demons. Jim, want to jump John in there? John 44. You are children of your father, the devil, and you want to follow his desires. From the very beginning, he was a murderer and has never been on the side of truth because there is no truth in him. When he tells a lie, he is only doing what is natural to him because he is a liar and the father of lies. And that story of John 8, 44, if you read the whole thing and you realize what's happening, it was amazing. Jesus is speaking to the Sanhedrin, the, all the leaders of the Jewish people. And he says, I, he says, I am. And he just kept on, they didn't know it, he picked it up. Again, he said, I am. Kept on, nobody picked it up. And finally he said, before Abraham was born, I am, oh! You, that's what you're going to... So they started throwing rocks at him. Well, they, or they tried to throw they, rocks at him. They said, you're claiming to be God, and you are. You are claiming to be God. What an amazing thing. Okay. Jennifer, Mark 5. Mark 5, verse 2. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, he was met by a man who came out of the burial caves there. This man had an evil spirit in him. And First Peter 5, 8. Be alert. Be on the watch. Your enemy, the devil, roams round like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Okay, in opposition to the devil's ideas, we have stories of Jesus casting out demons under various situations in the Gospels. <clears throat> in one case we read, Charles? Luke 8, 26 to 33. Jesus and his disciples sailed over to the territory of uh, Jerasa which is across the lake of Galilee. As Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a man from the town who had, been, who had demons in him. For a long time, this man had gone without clothes and would not stay at home, but spent his time in the burial caves. When he saw Jesus, he gave a loud cry, threw himself down at his feet and sh shouted, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, what do you want with me? I beg you, don't punish me. He said this because Jesus had ordered the evil spirit to go out of him. Many times he insisted him and even 
though he was kept a prisoner, his hands and feet fastened with chains, he would break the chains and be driven by the demon out in the desert. Jesus asked him, What's your name? My name is Mob, he answered, because many demons have gone into him. The demons begged Jesus not to send them in the abyss. There was a large herd of pigs uh, nearby uh, feeding on the hillside. So the demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs and he let them let them. They went out of the men and into the pigs. The whole herd rushed down the sea side and the cliff into the lake and was drowned. I have two questions every time I read that story. Mm. Would any Jews dare to drink any of that water for the next five years after all the pigs drowned. <laughs> That's my first question. And the next question is, follows up on what we're gonna read next. Gordon? From Great Controversy, Ellen White wrote, but the, process, but the purposes of Christ were not thwarted. He allowed the evil spirits to destroy the herd of swine as a rebuke to those Jews who Jews. were raising these unclean beasts for the sake of gain. So the Jews were raising pigs, pigs which they were forbidden to touch eat or, or eat. touch mm -hmm. for the sake of gain. Shocking. Had not Christ restrained the demons, they would have plunged into, into the sea, not only the swine, but also their keepers and owners. Whoa. Mm -hmm. The preservation of both the keepers and the owners was due alone to his, that is Christ's power, mercifully exercised for their deliverance. Wow. Great Controversy 515. Isn't that something? They were the prodigal sons. <laughs> Seventh-day Adventists want to make it very clear that we are opposed to these kinds of spiritualistic ideas. Thus, we have included the following in our system of beliefs. Myra? Belief number 11 growing in Christ. By his death on the cross, Jesus triumphed over the forces of evil. He who subjugated the demonic spirits during his earthly ministry has broken their power and made, a, made certain their ultimate doom. Jesus' victory gives us victory over the evil forces that still seek to control us. As we walk with as we walk with him in peace, joy, and assurance of his love. Now the Holy Spirit dwells within us and empowers us. Continually committed to, to Jesus as our Savior and Lord, we are set free from the burden of our past deeds. No longer do we live in the darkness, fear, and evil powers, fear of evil powers, Ignorance and meaningfulness. Meaninglessness. Meaninglessness. It's a longness. Yes. Of our former way of life. In, in this new freedom in Jesus, we are called to grow into the likeness of his character, communing with him daily in prayer, feeding on his word, meditating on it, and on his provident, pro, providence singing his praises, gathering together for worship and participating in the mission of the church. We are also called to follow Christ's example by compassionately ministering to the physical, mental, social, emotional, and spiritual needs of humanity. As we give ourselves in loving service to those around us in witnessing of his salvation, to his salvation, his constant presence is with us through the Spirit, through the Spirit transforms every moment and every task into a spiritual ex and I can, experience. Yeah, sorry. Some of you are aware, and maybe some of you aren't, that there are places in the world where the devils are still very, very active. Um, there is a, a secondary school in northeastern India, where they, this is an Adventist school where there's a lot of devil worship and so forth, stuff going. and there have been times when um, 
people, kids, students have been thrown out of their beds onto the floor by, by, by demons. So this is devil worship in the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And students that have come there. Yeah. Okay, Adventism is one of the few religions that is pretty much worldwide. In some areas, especially in Asia and Africa, Christians are faced on a regular basis with spiritualism and occultism and some very forceful manifestations, as I've just mentioned one of them. But we need to be aware that, and I want to ask you a question before we go on. How, how do the communists who claim there is no supernatural powers, how do they respond to this kind of stuff? Anybody have any idea? They don't welcome it. That's, it's contrary to their... I mean, if, yeah. But we need to be aware that even in the Western world, satanic ideas are creeping into all kinds of media. Will we be prepared for Satan's final deceptions? Consider what is being widely promoted through our media, movies, and the Internet. Could we be subtly deceived? You know, what do you do with, uh, they talk about, remember, Daniel 7, 25, change mm -hmm. times with laws. What do they do with this, boys decide that they want to become girls. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's a, about as basic yeah. <laughs> as, you, as you can get. And yet, they, and the government and certain facets of the medical industry mm -hmm. and so forth, they, they promote it. Well, at least they... Yeah, yeah, that's... And they're, they're doing it because they care about the patient? No, it's the money. Follow the money. Well, and there's, there's many other aspects of this. I, I think even more serious is all the stuff that's going on with media. Oh, sure, of course. I mean, what it's doing to our kids. I think it was, was it yesterday I read in one place that there was more than two hours a day our kids are in the average... The average kid is exposed to TV, the internet, social media, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we're worried about China being influencing us through TikTok, a big, all this hullabaloo about TikTok and China. What about the devil? It doesn't exist. They're imploding. Mm -hmm. Just the whole system is imploding. Out of total chaos comes total control, Hegelian dialectic, yeah. and it's not too far. Yeah. Okay, let's close. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you so much for being warned, for giving us these clear indications of what's coming. Help us not to be deceived and help us not to allow those around us to be deceived because we know the truth. We thank you for this, these revelations. We thank you for all the teachings that you have given us that we have been able to study together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.